She is live at the Canton industrial area tonight and Melissa, a lot of truck drivers pass right through that area and they're going to feel these impacts. Yeah, hey there, Simone. I've been talking to commuters pretty much all day today. I'm north of the harbor and Fort McHenry tunnels at a gas station here, one of the last ones that you can go to before you get into those tunnels on the north side of it. And a lot of these people, they use the tunnels and the bridges, but especially the key bridge as well. There are more than uh, 35,000 people actually use the key bridge every single day, more than twice that for both of Baltimore's tunnels. So now you can expect a lot more extra traffic, especially now during rush hour. Ray has been driving trucks up and down the East Coast for more than 30 years. He was filling his tank up so he could head north back home to Connecticut last night when he decided to take a nap here at this Royal Farms on Hollibird Avenue, just north of the Key Bridge, until his wife was in a panic and... Woke me up, and she didn't know where I was, so... How scary that must have been for her. I know, she had to be scared, but... He does this trip pretty regularly and feels blessed. So I was lucky I got off before all of this happened and uh, I'm going north. Michael Taylor lives in East Baltimore and crosses the Key Bridge twice a day, every day. First thing I thought about was like, what if that was me on my way to school? All them people dropped down there, drowning, and only thing I could think about is their family, you know? State officials say more than 35,000 vehicles cross the Key Bridge daily. And now those drivers, whether they're making a trip up and down the eastern seaboard, heading to the port of Baltimore, or just trying to make their 10-minute commute to school, will have to find a new way. GPS ain't too much of a help because we keep getting stuck. Or if you're truck driver Ray, you'll stay put in Connecticut, for now at least. I don't plan on coming down until they figure it out. Really? That's the best way. Now, a lot of drivers I've spoken to today, they really don't have that option. Unfortunately, they told me they'll use the harbor and Fort McHenry tunnels, which you see some of the traffic here that's going into the tunnels right now. Again, we're on the north side of those tunnels, and normally it is a little bit more hectic around here towards the end of rush hour, but there is no school this week as well. They're on spring break, so that's putting up a factor into to it as well. I spoke to one commuter who is from Dundalk, grew up, watched the bridge go up at age 11, and he said he hasn't really been able to go and see the key bridge missing there anymore. He says it feels like he lost a family member. So definitely a mix of emotions here that we've heard from a lot of people all day. A lot of commuters trying to figure out how they're going to get around, but also a somber sentiment seeing a fixture of the Baltimore skyline no longer there. We are live in Baltimore this evening. I'm Melissa Kim at WUSA 9. Simone, Just back to you. Just beginning to learn how this bridge collapse is changing the community in so many ways. Melissa, thank you.